Many times they have tried to get themselves to a Valve Grand Final Virtus Pro, always coming up short, and tonight, will they be the ones to stop OG, who have a 100% win rate at every Grand Final of a Valve event they reach? Sind, is tonight the night for VP? I think they're the favorites, personally at least. Uh, they looked amazing in, in today's matches, they looked amazing yesterday. OG have had a little bit of pickups, but they made it here again, like you said. They, you can't really... It's hard to go against the track record of OG, especially, I think you even mentioned that they won every single one 3-1 one as well? Uh, pretty much every single okay. one. Now, there one there actually hasn't one. been a Valve final which has not been 3-1 since we go back to TI3, when okay. it went for the full best of five, and that was also the only grand final which went the whole distance. Yeah. Well, OG definitely have the track record favoring them, but this is not going to be an, an easy final for them. I think BP looked very scary. I think they have a great draft for themselves in this game. They got their Magnus again, double melee core, a uh, great team fight lineup. Good roaming hero for Lil. They have the crowd, sixth player, maybe. <laughs> maybe. As Playing well. from the bench, I'm sure everyone here is a lot behind VP, especially more than OG. Many times as OG, who are, the, who are the crowd favorites, but they'll be fighting against that, fighting against Virtus Pro. And as you said, this is a great team fight, it's a great initiation, it's a great aggression that can be tempered by Virtus Pro that comes out of their draft. And no surprise, the panel is leaning towards them as well. But OG is their Terrorblade kind of play. You have S4 on one of his critical heroes, Jirax on the OP King, Anna, who has been an absolute wonder for anyone who's got in his fantasy team, playing that mid lane. He's been having a superb tournament. Yeah, OG are on a very comfortable lineup as well. I think this game is it's pretty difficult to say who's a favorite just based on draft alone. I think both teams have different strengths. Uh, just when it comes to raw team fights, so much comes down to who gets the jump. If S4 gets to set up for the Monkey King, they have great team fight follow up with him and Phoenix and the Invoker. On the other hand, any decent RP, VP, I, I feel like I'm just going to roll over whoever they catch in the RP. They have so much follow up damage. They have Golem. Uh, as I, as I mentioned, the two melee cores with high burst damage, both of them, both Slark and Ursa, kill quickly. And the Tusk can be very disruptive in these fights as well. Actually, I think a pretty interesting hero to have against a hero like Terrorblade. Uh, not the fastest hero already, and then you add in Frozen Sigil. I can, of course, also try to catch him off guard with the shards. It's not that easy for Terrorblade as a carrot to get out of this shard compared to many other heroes that have some sort of mobility. Like the Slark, they have themselves, or an Antid Mage with Blink. A type of hero. I like the Tusk here for VP, although it's not something we've seen from them too much this turn. So. I'll see if the synergy can work for it. For now, I, this aggro tri lane that Virtus Pro has been running has kept the Monkey King's attention down the bot lane, now forcing Jirax and Lil to have kind of, kind of this little bit of a roaming maneuver, and that leaves a one-on-one -on -one matchup. No one against the Invoker, the mid-Ursa with PMS. And how is this Invoker really meant to do anything against the Ursa, especially when no one's getting this aggressive, continuously pushing into him, trying to keep the swipes up? I'm pretty sure this lane matchup is unwinnable for Invoker uh, early on. I can't see, like you said, what he's supposed to do. Just gonna keep running at him, clapping him, and then hitting him with your swipe. Probably gonna need help from the Monkey King at some point here. Speaking of which, bottom lane. Also, damage up. No one's being forced to run around the tree lines. Convoker actually didn't even level up uh, Cold Snap because he avoided the point up in Quas. He went for a 1 Wex, 1 Exort at the start here for the Invoker. He needs to like to reliably last it. Don't take this. See him using all of his mana more or less to get this Alacrity running. Well, he's got three CS out of the 10-5 that the Ursa has managed to find so far. This is uh, a very good laning phase so far for Virtus Pro. Even the Slark got a lot on the off lane. And up on the top lane, well, Pasha, it's been rough for him, but he's still keeping neck and neck with S4 CS. Uh, this is definitely not the greatest matchup you can have your Magnus in, but the uh, early levels, just with Magic Stick, should be fine for Pasha. This mid lane. Oh, we might see over here. Lil shot. Ah, he gets pushed back in again. No one. He doesn't actually have the clap. TP support is forced out, so Jurex will move to the mid lane. You can feel Virtus Pro looking for that first blood. This mid matchup, I feel like it's one that was pioneered by the old DC. Uh, Weeha used to play this mid Ursa against Invoker and this type of hero that is a bit slow in lane and take great advantage of it, and no one seems to have been inspired by that. This is an absolute trashing in the mid lane. You were praising Ana going into this thing. He's had a great tournament. He's going to need to uh, come back in this lane. He's down 
three to nineteen in CS three minutes in. Yeah, this is this is not the dream for an invoker. If he can get the hand of Midas, then maybe Kassan playing catch up. But for now, it's just avoid dying to no one. Don't escalate the problems in the mid lane. Because if they do that, and this Ursa gets momentum, Virtus Pro will be having a celebration, a celebration, a celebration drink tonight. A celebratory. A celebratory. Yes, that's. Thank you, sir. There it is. I rely on you. It's my native language, not yours. I only speak Australian. <laughs> so they switched the lanes up, Virtus Pro. They brought Ramses to the top. So Pasha actually moves himself down the bottom lane. He's had a really good start with the boots already, and is looking to, in to just encroach onto that energy booster, and then he can just hold back this bottom lane. Two points up on the Shockwave, it's very difficult for OG to push it out. And that's what we haven't seen really yet from Nortel. He's already burnt the Metamorphosis once, and the damage to the T1 tower is negligible. S4, he wanted this top rune. This can get scary for him. Oh, they're not going to connect. So the Firefly was running out, and if they catch him in charge, there is a play for the team force there. But they're stacked up nicely by yeah. the Sticky Napalm, so he will get both bounty runes here. With this bottle, very nice for him, gonna be using the shrine as well. So, fairly uncommon that we see Batrider get bottle in the off lane, but as far as rocking in this game, probably expecting that he will be able to grab this bounty a couple times and play off that advantage. Is he actually, this is one of the most determined catapults I've ever seen. Uh, S4's gonna bring it up near the town of bottom lane, Pasha, on oh, no tail and fly, you've got the Hadouken from the creep. Actually helping them out. I don't know if Fly is purposely planning that, but Pasha remains low. He's still got the escape until Chirax in through the side. Doesn't actually have the stun, but the stun strike, the stun will be let out. No, no. Hits the money load, and that'll help him come back a little bit down to level five. And the net worth will also be boosted up. He's now second in the net worth with that kill. Yeah, this pretty much makes the mid lane even, more or less. Uh, experience looks even. He's totally back in the game. Great connection there from OG. Maybe a bit cocky from Pasha to go for that last hit, and he did have Skewer. Maybe he was trying to bait fly in and then Skewer him back. But... Oh, S4 so low. The leash is there, Ramses. A quick rebuttal on the safe lane. S4 was playing with fire, literally. Slark is going to get a very fast fight this game. Good for Ana to come back into this game. I think it's going to be very important for OG that they plant these sun strikes. Their kill potential in the early game is not that great in any of their lanes. Uh, Monkey King plus Bat Rider may have a play, but Slark is such a difficult opponent to bring down. Jerex, I'll find Lil here. One prod from the Tusk. He's trying to stop the aggressive ward placement of Lil, or at least see if Lil puts it down. Meanwhile, soaking up the experience in the mid lane, because there's no way Anna wants to come back here. He's trying to get as much farm out of the jungle as possible. You still want to have that 9 minute Midas. And he is on the way for that. Maybe a little bit earlier because of that kill. And it's also very good for Monkey King to get a bit of experience. I feel like this hero has had varying success. And a lot of the time it comes down to whether you manage to get a, a timely level 6. The Wukong's command will be a very great ability against such a melee heavy lineup like Virtus Pros with 4 melee cores. Tusk is looking to engage up on top. If he could find a good like good position for it, put down a rather defensive ward on the radiant side of the river, just around the shrine. Not a common one to de ward unless you're looking at the no point. As far as being spotted here, I think. Actually, I can't talk about it. Now he is. Yeah. That observe ward, if they cut down one of the trees, they would see a hell of a lot more. So they will see him rotating toward mid. I'm quite sure what they're searching for right now. Trying to get a D ward, I suppose. Doesn't find anything. Uh, they're still looking for the ward the task can put down. Because they saw they didn't actually see Lil retreat back out. So the only information they had to start with was watching uh, with from Jirax's perspective. And that was the task guy running next to the ancients. So that's why they put the sentry down, trying to get S4. Just a little bit of extra cash. Midas complete and 50 gold. Bit of pressure on Fly here in the bottom lane as well from Pasha. There will be a TP coming in again from Terrorblade. Went back to region up. His metamorphosis is coming off cooldown. And Pasha is in a position where he can slow the attack. But thanks to the observe wall that's just behind the tower on the bottom, OG may feel inclined to again go for the exact same play they did previously. So you bring in the Monkey King from behind. You keep the harassment onto Pasha. And then just jump him for the stun into Sunstrike. 
Go that would be a really good kill now with uh, Metamorphosis ready as well. Should give them the tower. Shirax, no. He's looking for it to pounce up. There he goes. Just stun strike. No, he didn't get the stun timing right. Tried to actually stun Pasha mid skewer. That was an excellent skewer. I'm not sure where he saw Jerax, but had a feeling that it was coming. Still OG. Get the bigger objective as it looks. They will be taking the tower. Pasha keeping it as early as possible, but. And flipping. It's still a little late. With a catapult behind him, Sprite's flying in Jirax. He wants to go for another quick jump. It just creates space for him. Anything else in the last note, I'll take the T1 tower. The VP, they look for their own tower. Double damage onto the Ursa, beating into the T1 tower in mid. And Anna coming to defend. So is Jirax. Modification will scare off the Hungry Bear. Anna has recovered very nicely in this game. Very impressive when you get destroyed that hard early on. That's what a Sunstrike kill can do for you, especially when it's the first blood. Midas is already been used once. Still, overall, a fairly quiet early game. Only two kills in nine, but good amount of pressure still being applied. OG taking the first tower. Uh, as you said, Ursa doing whatever he can to do some chip damage. It's the rest of BP that are getting a lot of space. Ramsey's been taking the stacks while Solo is leeching the experience. It's pushing him up. They're trying to get the level sixes or just even items and levels on their supports. So Tuscar as well as Warlock become the priority, while Sly can just farm in the jungle at his level eight. Not to mention, he's also using his own hand of Midas. So finding that far. Middle lane, lasso, out from S4. The jump is coming forward, long counts down. But no wonder will he have enough speed to get out of this one. The stun, it's a triple stun out from Jirax. The Soul Strike won't connect now. In comes Randy. He was farming the jungle. He wants to find a kill. The Snowball, who's Tuscar going for? The RP! Pasha, the perfect timing. Anna, definitely blocked us, trying to push back Randy. He's able to actually do it. S4 has a double kill out of it. They're not done yet, or are they? No one. Base boots are on cooldown, so he's not going to run over the hill. The frozen sigil is very important to consider. We don't really talk about the ability too much when we're talking Tusk, and it's a bit subtle in the fights, but it makes a very big difference when heroes group up like that. It was a good engage from OG, but this time around, I do believe the Sunstrike missed it did. on Ursa. He was turning around to fight. And could have maybe been a slight bit better on the execution there. They don't want to sun strike immediately when they go in because they're expecting the enrage to come off. So well played by Ana to hold it. But then with both with both teams, so it ended up being an even trade. Like OG got 331 gold and uh, Virtus Pro got 322 gold. So it was hey. it was so damn close of meme filled. Virtus Pro they found the observer ward. OG really wanted to have this for a fight. Did you just yes, you get that tonight? Okay, no money for you. Good way to be annoying. OG's getting ready to fight up on top lane. Fly does have that supernova available. No talent got metamorphosis up. Jirax still shy of his level 6, but S4. No blink dagger yet, but you know what he wants. Fire fly up, come over the tree lines, into Lil's blind spot, and they just lasso him back. The sun strike, it will connect. So even though Anna is farming up in the mid lane and holding the pressure back, he still is able to get these free, this free gold. And that's one of the big reasons why Anna gets so many points in these series is because OG help him all the way. Especially with heroes like this Invoker. Now you take the T1 tower, the money starts rolling in. And VP... Where's that aggression now come? You didn't go for the early Vlads on the Earth. So does he does he actually get... Because uh, he went for the Blink Dagger. Do you still think about Roshan before you go for a fight with a Blink Dagger? Mm. Rosh is a bit tricky right now. You're playing against the Monkey King and the Bat Rider. They have really good vision around that area, so it's it's not too easy for VP. Surprising to me, honestly, here that that Lil was standing next to that tower before they even went on him. I was going to say they probably will just give up this tower because they don't have RP... Um, and both of you are already grouped up and in a very nice position. Here comes the gang. The case. Yep. Anna is going to be the one caught out. The Observer was down. They see him clearly. They even drop the rock. Hatred galore for the Invoker. It's a mid tower as well. Totally worth dropping the rock for such a big kill. No metamorphosis, no Invoker, and no fortification to delay things either. Yeah. So five man rotate or four man rotation for this plus rock. Meanwhile, OG is still trying to get everything they need to fight. The phase boost is coming up for Jirax, but more importantly, he's getting the space in the bottom lane to get the Wukong's command up. And that'll make VP a little bit more cautious about the fights. With the Blink Dagger on S4 and Wukong command, VP can get easily zoned when they don't have that RP or that Warlock Golem to drop down and do the counter control on the fight. 
The Magnus Slick Dagger is coming up very soon, though, so both RP and Skewer will be nice tools for them. And as far as the game is going right now, it looks very even on the graphs. I think if BP knew that, they would be fairly happy with that. They're starting to kind of be able to build up a lot of passive farm now that Empower is reaching high level, currently level 3. Benefits Mag, Snark, and Ursa tremendously throughout the entire game. And OG will probably keep up the farming pace mainly by virtue of using this conjure image of the Terror Blade. Of course, a lot of the time with Terror Blade, you get a lot of uh, gold without getting too much experience. Your illusions are the only ones pushing out. As falls on the hunt, he just pinged down saying, I'm fairly certain there is some over here. They don't have any, de actually, uh, dead. they don't have any detection. Both the supports with no sentry wards, they can't get rid of the ult ward, which is why VP understand this is not a fight they want to take. So let the tier 1 tower fall. That's the last remaining tier 1 tower of Virtus Pro. And they smoke up. This is the Magnus Blink reveal. Golem is on cooldown, however. But I I feel like we have to mention the discrepancy in experience between the core threat. The start is level 12 to the level just 9 of Terror Blaze. This is the Midas coming into play. It's the nature of the heroes coming into play. So the gold graph is looking okay, but this experience will keep flowing the way of BP, and all of these passive stats they're getting from leveling up their heroes will play a big role. Keep in mind, OG's lineup is not the greatest at all against Spark in general. So, Ramses can have one of these games that he takes over later on, and OG might need to itemize to address this Spark, something along the lines of a hex or maybe some serious burst. Is there a way they can itemize and just add pressure before the Slark gets that late game? If he's going to become unmanageable later on, does this then become one of those timing pushes around the 30 minute mark where OG look to go high ground? I find it difficult to imagine. Blink Lasso, talk about the Slark, drag him back in, Wukong Command as well as Dunstrike, Randy will pounce down, he goes into the Shadow Dance, but S4 keeps right on top of him, thanks to Haste Rune. A very, very fast bat. Monkey King is so nice against Sark because you can't free cast the Dark Pack. You don't get to react because the stun comes out of the trees. The big pick here for OG. For now, this is going to work, so very nice kill for them, buying more time. Um, it, it's it's going to be difficult for OG to end this game early before Slark gets strong. I think they're going to have to address him at some point. Uh, that, that kill definitely helps slowing him down. Later will be a very strong hero. This observer will see the lot. Lil and Pasha are running around. And Pasha, like he's going to cast the Empower from outside the pit into the pit. Nah, uh, here comes the Forge Spirit. They really want to see Illusion as well as far as the Firefly up. They see no one low. Remember, there is no Lasso. So without that, you're not really going to have much to work with. So they just have to play the distance. Keep in mind, too, Jirak's position. No Wukong command for him either. Another reason why VP probably feel very confident coming in here. They've got their big ulties up. The Pure Swipe stacks expired and are gone, so no one lost interest. Trying to this time they're going to find a double damage, and he has a bottle, so they have plenty of time to save this up for a good moment, either to Roche or find a team fight. The line is being drawn here by Fly that he thinks. I'm actually not sure what to make of this line. Is, 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 that, a, is that a push to the mid lane? Push to the mid lane? It might be, but no one's doing it, so. <laughs> Or this is where the mid lane is. Yeah. Sounds didn't, like a nursery rhyme. Right? Didn't really, uh, didn't really see the movement out of them that that line would represent. But now he's gonna do it himself. Maybe that was the the whole point. I will take care of mid. I, I got this area. Go farm elsewhere. Be, be smart. Yeah. Oh, warlock. Monkey King. One of these trees is stacked on the other. One of these trees just doesn't fit in. And Ursa, he triggered his double damage, and he really wanted to go in for Roshan. The Terrorblade Illusions just coming to the front lines. S4 still with that Firefly trigger. They saw Jerax. Really they saw Jerax. Right and they maybe, they pull him back in. The lasso is out. Fly goes into the Nova. Will the egg pop? Randy's trying to slide down the stun from T-Rex. Will do the work. Is she going to five minutes? Done? No! They kill him off just in time. Wukong Command controlling on the back when Jerax gets mopped up by Randy's. No more command. No tail. He's got Sunder available. The Ice Ball from Arma is controlling. No one. But here goes your RP. It catches out the Terrorblade. He will fall. No one. Not a healthy man, S4 still causing real problems at fast attack, allowing Magnus. Pasha gets back to base in the back of his CB, and Ramses will retreat. So a three for three trade off. Both these teams going hammer and tongs and coming out even. Great engage from both of them. The, they ping out the the Monkey King. They saw him jumping onto the tree. Lil pings him. They blink skewer him with Mag. So they stun him by breaking the tree first and then skewer him down. Kill him. 
he did get Wukong's command out, but got killed off pretty quickly after. But because OG got the counter engage at the same time with the Bat Rider, it ended up being an even fight. If OG aren't quick to pounce there, they would have probably just lost the Roche on Monkey King being dead and, and BP having some decent vision. Very close once again. Let's have a quick look at that move movement. So there it is. The blink, the skewer, the stun. The Warlock couldn't get his ulti off either. S4 has been right on the money. The this supernova was so close and that could have that would have been a big win for OG this fight. Really thought that stun was gonna last a little bit longer from Jirax. But it wasn't long enough. But it's so still much patience from Pasha here. Yeah. Great play all around from everyone. It was a very good fight. No one won. Not the player. <laughs> Nobody won. <laughs> oh, that's my line. Uh, well, in a way, maybe slight victory for VP. As far as economy, it didn't really change the gold graph too much. But No Tail died and Slark survived. And Slark, I believe, got one of the kills, did he? He got two of the kills, actually. He killed both Fly and Jerex. So good money flowing in for him. But you're still Almost also having Nicholas the main favorite. initiator of OG not being controlled. Like, S4 is 4 1 3 on this Batrider, Blink Dagger, 4 staff up. And he's kind of the man which is controlling such a heavy amount of this fight. What happens when he's able to pick up a Jesus Guard? What happens when he's able to control a BT and it becomes the saving of Lil, where we turn our attention to, as opposed to the aggressive roll forward which we got from Lil in the last fight? Yeah, they will. Probably have to consider Lincoln's later on. I don't think it's necessary just yet. Of course, Ursa is a very special case. He has a built-in way of dealing with the Bad Rider Lasso in his agonims that he is working on right now. Mm -hmm. Great choice in this game. It's good against the entirety of Hochi's lineup, really. But Ramsey's will need to make spear still. More if than he, likely, If he can't yes. get the timing, it's like that insurance thing. The alternative for him is going BKB, and then you can probably survive if you quit like it fast. I don't think OG have enough burst for BKB, not yet anyway, to kill him off. Yeah. Uh, Terrorblade will deal substantial amounts of damage later, but as you mentioned, there's the Trump card in Tusk that could turn things around here. Up to some mischief bottom. He actually gets spotted here again by Lil. He's pinged out, so they know where the Monkey King is, and this could prompt them to go for a play. Blink Dagger RP is available once again on Magnus. But you don't have to make it. They're all grouped up in the mid. Farm. VP want to actually still look towards Roshan. Like, we can't forget, that was the other big advantage OG had from around the fight. It's the fact that Virtus Pro with an Ursa, we're 20 minutes in, and they still haven't claimed their first Roshan. The build that was coming in from Ursa anyway kind of understood this. Hence, he's gone Blink, Banisher, and now it's Wagon Inceptor. It's not Vlad, it's not the aura play we've seen before. RP Lance. up on top, catching out Anna. No one will jump in, but Anna in fist. Who brought the detection? The sentry wall is too far away. Anna makes a break for the tree lines. Now the dust will go. Rolling boulder forward. Anna creates a little bit of space with Tornado, but nowhere near enough. 50 seconds on the sideline, but you commit your RP. You commit all five heroes to go for that fight. But without the Invoker, Roshan becomes a very heavy topic. That was such an awkward kill. <laughs> he got RP, just stood invis in the whole RP, started walking around, da da da, and then finally the dust actually barely flipped him there, I think. Solo wasn't too far away from missing that. They got the kill. Nice nice understanding from BP that they could, that they could connect. Good communication there. Note that uh, BP didn't go straight in for Roshan. Jurex was expecting it. That's the reason why he moved so early, he could camouflage himself. Because one of these trees, again, doesn't fit in. It's it's not easy for VP to go for Roche, even though they kill Invoker. There's still the threat of getting jumped by Bad Rider. If they just pick off anyone, the fight is kind of, or the Roche attempt is over, and they could just lose key heroes down there. No RP, out of mana on Ursa. It's, they decide it's too difficult, and I'm with them on that. Actually, no tail showing the real hero of the to jump by Ramsey right now. Yeah, he wants to go on him. No tail, the damage should be enough. He's got Sunder available. Let's go, but the rock. Okay, again, solo. Very, very happy to use that rock at a moment's notice. He was very out of position. That was unusual for no tail to be in this kind of position. Generally, just put the illusions to push there and go in the jungle with your hero, but maybe he's starting to feel like he's feeling the pressure. There isn't that many safe areas on the map oh, right now. Nice lasso. Right, our lasso pulling back in. The sun strike can hit the timing with Wukong's command. There's no help coming to Solo. They can get rid of that observer ward as well, thanks to the sentry that's on the deck. Actually, no, the sentry is just out of range. So the observer ward was placed. Flame break doesn't push them out of the pit. And you can see more into the hands of no one. With the secondary sentry now down by Fly, they do get rid of the ops. But Roshan, it goes to Vernus Pro. It took 22 minutes to do it.
if OG commit that much to killing the Warlock who doesn't have all on the camp, so I think the Wukong's command is kind of wasted. Uh, just the last row into Sunstrike should be more than enough. Maybe they were expecting that VP would try to help their Warlock, but wisely just stay in the pit, claim the big objective, and Solo is more than happy to die for the cause there. That's just keep build more does. advantage. This is, it's looking good for them right now. Still a close one, though. But you would imagine going a bit later in with this Aghanim's coming up for Ursa momentarily and BKBs will be coming out later and Lincoln. OG is taking five out executors to get us harder and harder, whereas BP, they have this exceptional AoE BKB piercing ability and massive AoE damage, actually two BKB piercing ultimates, whereas they only really have the Batrider ult to be on OG and that's a single target. Yeah. Well, Explosion of supernova, <laughs> but not reliable. Let's put it that way. Unless Fly can get the perfect position on a hill like that, that's that's not going to be a good dream. And the VP is smoking up. They're trying to make the most out of all these ultimates we've just oh, been no. listing. Look for the opening. There's the oh, American tornado. Oh, 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 oh. I know what. Wow, that was that was perfect. I don't know. Spectacular Dodo and now Curtis Pro with no invoker again on the field. Anna 4 4 with the invoker who got pressure early on, played a great catch up game and now is becoming the primary target for Curtis Pro. But the knock forces in the issue too heavily. It's back to the lanes, it's back to pushing him back out. They understand if they start losing tier 2, tier 3 towns, one fight just goes slightly awry. And with no buyback, that terrible lady can do a lot of damage very quickly. Not to mention, this is the OG special ability. You get the illusion that you keep the side lane pressured. You keep Virtus Pro always wondering if they're going to get the better trade off. And when those big AoE ultis are blowing, going up high ground, when you're considering that you have to trade tier 2 for tier 3 or something along the deep lines, it still makes you think twice. Ramses is so far ahead of <laughs> Yeah, he's it's 14k. Actually, he is three levels ahead of the highest level in OG. Okay, now it's gonna be too soon to be able to not get accepted. He's just got his BKB as well. Yeah, like he's coming on the courier. That's the item, it's gonna be an issue. He could still go for the Lincolns in combination with it. And then suddenly OG are extremely limited in how they can control this mark. We were talking about how it was gonna be a problem. I don't think they've managed to shut him down nearly enough in order to prevent him from getting this game. But then again, how would they? It's just a beautiful pick from BP in this game. I, it was their fifth pick, right? It was. Yeah. Very nice. No one jumps in, goes in S4, quick four start. Anna looking for a tornado hit. He's not going to find anything. No one sees it coming from a mile away. Remember, no one can break tornado as well with that. He wants to. I believe that should work. S4, he's looking at Lil. He can't look at no one. He knows he can't look at no one. But the four star's still on cooldown for another two seconds. So we're sticky napalm. But he said, you're Randy. He'll go in. The Thunder Ace out. Will it be enough life to regenerate up S4? Not oh, worth nice. He's trapped in the shards. Locked in the icy cone of death. With Zola dropping the rock. Virtus Pro. They bring down two. Anna again with no buyback. Will fall. Agency Mortal is also up for the Ursa. He's Huge got this for two minutes. Wow, that was excellent. Play. They're going to come in. They're coming into the OG home. Yeah, RP is still online, and they have the Aegis. This was actually not that big of a commitment from them. Yep. All they used was Fox BKB. And the Rock. And the Rock, that is true. No rock. one was looking for an opening, but uh, OG, they're back in so far. They're just trying to use the Fire Spirits to slow down the attack with the burn of the Sunray. They'll pull the Creek Wave down to the Tier 4 Towers. But again, you still don't have the Invoker. The jump in from Jirak, the three-man stun, not being the Wukong's command. They just try and put the Reflect on the Pasha. Now S4 is up. Well here, OG gets the jump nothing. with that lasso. They found Solo again. It seems to be the consolation prize. The box of chocolates for coming and appearing in game one. Virtus Pro still get what they want. The tier three tower, which now opens up the shrines outside. By the way, we didn't get to touch so much on this. Oh, um, the the skill build of Solo in this game is very unusual. I think he was 
on level 5, he had 0, 2, 3. I want to say. I seem to remember that. So didn't go for the bonds early on, but prioritized upheaval. And I think it's his way of trying to deal with this Terra Blades movement in the fight. If the hero, if it can't just take these steps forward, it becomes very difficult to lose the skill damage. It's a trade off, though, right? You can also say, why don't you just max fatal bonds and kill them all? Mm. Uh, but it's worth highlighting that this is something different and some. I want to say creative thinking, because this is an old build that almost never gets used anymore by Warlock, but. Solo is making the decision in this game that it was more interesting. Now he's about to max out those three skills. Oh, slogs are close. They don't have detection. Oh, he knows Anaker it, though. He knows it. Is. Detection is coming. It's the dust on Tusk. He'll actually connect on the Monkey King of all. Warlock will trick his as well, but Anna quickly ghosting away on the top lane. They want to fight this, however. Both dust are down. Monkey King puts the Observer War down as well, so they get good vision behind and in front. These two obs. See so much of Virtus Pro, but still OG do not feel confident enough to take this. So they BT and Voka down to the bottom lane, and they start the split push. Yeah, VP might as well wait as well. They have another BKB coming out. This is a BKB for the Ursa of no one. So racking up the advantages for OG to win a fight now. They need some absolutely spectacular combination of skills and some kiting as well, more than likely. When those BKBs are up, I think the fight's just a no-go. No-Tail is not strong enough yet to get through these two cores. Half because of his farm, half because of his levels. He's level 14. He's not level 21. So low on levels. Even Anna, like, Anna's at 18. He's trying to play that game to get up. He's the only, he's the closest one to the Slark. And you can see also Anna's trying to make up for what isn't there from the other heroes. So s is building into a dual settler. He's trying to have something else that could potentially trigger a later Lincolns or be more control in the fight, which means the, uh, Maneuverability is now being picked up by Anna. He needs to get the cheapest guard to survive. Princess as well as provide the slaying him here. This is bad. There's a sentry next to him as well. Anna, he doesn't know. And now, well, can he actually have no space? The tornado's gonna miss. And Anna in biz, the dust and well sentry. Anna, movement speed. And he doesn't have enough to get away, even with a deafening blast. This time he will have buyback. But while this was going on up on top lane, no talent is approaching the tier 3 tower. But will VP care? They still have their big ulties up, Rock and RP. They need to be a bit cautious. They don't have a TP on Warlock, so he can't be the one going back to the vet. Instead, they will, so far, not send anyone back. Who has TP? Sarg doesn't use it. Cooldown on Tusk, cooldown on Mag. But at the same time, OG are cautious. They don't see heroes. Now they will see them on the Observer Warden. More than likely, S4 will just TP out of this room. Maybe oh, we'll around. So oh, he got spotted by no one. Oh, get out of S4. The punch will be right in position, and no one will find the kill on S4. How did you find it? Do you have a replay of that? Like, what? Echo location? They, they didn't scan, right? They didn't scan. They don't have vision. At least as far as I can tell. Maybe there was a ward that expired. No one will. There was no, it was the Irradiant Observer Ward that was up there that, that got taken down. That was I didn't see a Dire Ward. Read if he just found him there. He might have just guessed based on knowing how No-Tail plays, or sorry, S4 placed this Bad Rider, but that was really impressive. Maybe I missed something there, I don't know. That, that seemed unreal. So Jarex is closing in on Basher. I like to say this is uh, one of the most broken items in the game on any hero. Basher on Monkey King is absurd, but he did go for Crest first, really respecting the physical damage output of VP and taking more of a defensive route, more likely buying it more for the defensive purposes than the offensive one. Just keeping this farm going. Has had a pretty good game. Fly is also going to get a little bit of extra farm levels. He's picked up a hand of Midas. But Virtus Pro, they understand the position they're in this. They continue to bring down the outer towers. Roaches up. OG do not want to fight this. And yeah, by taking out the T1 and T2 tower on top, then you know they'll, they'll turn their attention to the shrine. Roshan could be the next simple target. Ramsey wants to give them a ticket to go in. And that ticket is kind of punched if he could find someone from OG out of position. Almost like the Batrider. S4 was four stopping and blinking, looking for the kill on Pasha. You still need to be careful here. One misstep and it could go really wrong. God. Something good happened for VP. I think he's counted uh, <laughs> the smart. Yeah. That's the Observe War that's sitting inside the base, and the OG came out. They're scouting out. Okay, it's with the Sunstrike trying to ship down the Ursa. Mr. BKB Pasha. Uh, on it with a tornado. Oh, nice, with an EMP burn. That will actually burn. No, no one's out of range, and so was Ramsey's. I'm gonna take this right here more than likely. Mm -hmm. Those big two control abilities. 
Now up late a little bit longer. S4 still hunting for a kill as well. Five flying up, can't find anything. So there goes your shrine. And they could just slip themselves into Roshan. Now five flies off cooldown and 20 seconds time. That's a long time for OG not to have the vision. But VP aren't going directly in for Roshan. They're waiting it up a little bit. And you know OG's looking for us. So we'll have a quick look at what happened up on top. Okay. He did just saw him from the other side? Did he catch a glimpse of him? I, I actually didn't even see it in the replay. We looked over too late. <laughs> yeah. It's not a bit too late, but regardless, great catch there from no one. Whether it was quick reactions or just a good guess, it's a great play no matter what. So if you're if you're urging now, is it just a vision advantage around Roshan that you try and play and counter Roshan yes. from VP? I don't think you can give them this Roshan. To, uh, you can't give VP to it. Generally... Fly is very good at leading his team, or whoever is doing the primary in-game shot contra. He puts a lot of emphasis on not giving Roshan away when they have a good vision lineup. Last Roshan, they had to concede. I think it was the right choice at the time, but if they just let VP take this Rosh for free, they kind of just opened their mid barracks up. VP is currently waiting. They're not getting aggressive just yet, so they're just going to fresh item on the slot to pull Scotty. Is now done for him, and with the Shadow Blade pass shot, to try and slip a little bit further forward. And the strike damage getting split between Lil as well as No One. They see a target, this Ramsey, he'll pounce himself away. He's just trying to poke the beast as Force gets the blink line open. No one breaks free. The tornado with the Rift Gold's command is a huge amount of combination. Lil will fall quickly. Earth has to be getting oh. the RP! Pasha! The whole enchilada that's done from Fly! He'll create space with a Firefly. It's actually nowhere enough. And a deafening blast trying to create more space. Fly! Yes, it Dive out, and it's on the run, but you know who's coming. It's the Slark under the Obsidian Sentry. Triple kill for no one, but they want everything. They want Ada. Difficult to catch him, though, when you've got cold feet from the ice wall. It's a four-man RP from Pasha. Great patience from him. Actually really like this engage from S4, as weird as it may sound. He jumped on the Ursa, and the reasoning here is OG wants to force the fight to break out, and sure, the Ursa can break out of it with the, the Enrage, but then it's used at least. And they did get a pretty good setup for their fight. The, the Phoenix came in nicely, they got a good Wukong's command out. If it wasn't for this incredible RP from BP, this could have been a great fight for OG. And very rarely would you say it's a good play to just use last of the Ursa, but I actually liked it. Didn't work though, and that is going to be a Roshan again for Virtus Pro. It's this time they put it on the Slark instead of yours. I'm guessing it's the Aghanim's difference this time that yeah, makes them make this decision. They believe the Ursa is going to be the immortal one with the Aghanim Scepter. Oh, and that's Randy's going to be a little bit more aggressive. So have so a look at this quit, Lasso. I don't know if it was a misclick. It might have been. Great Golem here. Four heroes done. Great bonds. And now, here we go, Pasha has already stepped to the side and gets in a massive RP here. You couldn't have asked for anything better. Fly actually ended up sending one person with his Nova and that was solo. He did so much work to try and keep Anna alive, sacrificing himself. So maybe that's the only upside. It's like, oh god, I only hit four. Oh. No tails like, damn, he hit four. <laughs> well, there's two ways of looking at it. Pa Pasha might be a bit disappointed because it was possible he could have survived that fight, but you know, you did you did well, Pasha. I think that's good enough for your team. You take what you can get. When, when, you're, when you're about 13,000 net worth in front and, and encroaching on uh, 20k experience advantage for Virtus Pro, like, you're very happy with your situation. And, you're, and you're coming straight back into the fight. Golems off cooldown in 28 seconds time. RP's already back up again. And Pasha is looking for Anna. Where are these obs and sentries? Where is this detection? Because Ramses will slip in under the cover of his Silver Edge, looking for the opportunity. Now, they do not see him, OG. There's no sentry ward at the front line. S4 comes in. Now the sentry's there. Tornado kicks up the slot. The Dark Pack will actually put him back down pretty quickly. Gets him away from the EMP. Not to mention the reflection. They're worried about bottom lane. This yeah. is that trade off, like what I was talking about. Like, OG will always make you think, am I actually not getting the best out of this? So they have to send no one to the bottom lane to defend. Buy space and time for OG. And they need that because Virtus Pro are very much in the driving seat. This will be a very quick push out from no one, and then he's going to reconnect with his team. Just pushing oh, two waves. He just goes speed to the Magnus, so he knew it. Pasha blinks forward, gets the RP off with a rolling bottle forward that actually punch kick him away. So will it be enough with Invoca? He does go down 81 seconds on the sideline. He committed both the RP as well as the Golem, however. Wait, what happened? 
It looked like a force staff combining with the walrus punch. I thought Tusk had an axe there. I was like, what happened? the same thing. The synergy was right on the money for the for the Aghanim Center, but he does not have it. That looked pretty funny. It must have been a force staff at the exact yeah. same moment. It like, was. I don't think I've ever seen that before. I think it was uh, S4 who was in the neighborhood. Yeah, he was the one that was pushing him. Trying to save him there. Monkey King, run. They know. Oh, they know. No. The skewer. He'll get the stun four seconds. He was trying to hide as a tree. Level 25 for Ramsey. That's so big. Solo's having troubles here in the mid lane, however. The burn is there, so Solo will fall. Two supports down from either side. Both without buybacks available. But you know Slark wants to come in. Sentry was there all over the place. And he actually used the Abyssal Blade on a fake No-Tail. No one, maybe not the greatest thing to initiate on. Slark still trying to run away. They shard to block the ramp area. But it could range tracks for Virtus Pro. He Abyssal a Contra image. That was not a Mansa style illusion. So just a, a bad read for him. But <laughs> fortunately for him, he made no two of his metamorphosis. So I guess it was a good play. It worked out very well for... No one here. They're going to shrine up. They know meta is on cooldown, and I think this is good enough for me to consider high ground. They will take bottom tier two first. Ramses is alone here. Obviously, No Tail and the rest of OG have no idea about this. Just trying to scout out the illusion. Okay, that's an easy tier two. Yeah. What else are they trying to build towards? The Slark is going towards the butterfly at the moment. Why well, you see Fly's item of choice? He's got twenty four hundred gold on this Phoenix. Maybe just buyback is still worth saving for. Anna is desperately trying to scrap to get the cash to pick up his Octarine. And S4 has to bought a new item in probably the last 15 minutes. Yeah, he, when did he get the yours? Um, I'm fairly certain it was around like 25. Yeah, sounds about right. Uh, here they come, Virtus Pro. Observer Ward's there. Look at that rider. Quick jump away. He's like, I know they can see me. I know they can see me. And a quick abyssal blade means he's gone, so send the illusions in. This is still not clear cut for VP. It's not that easy. They need to basically explode someone without a abyssal blade at the very, very beginning. But doing that when you've got, like, you're jumping into the OG base, potentially then being dragged towards the tier 4 towers, this is the fight that VP don't want to take. They don't want to have to rely on the huge RP of Pasha to get them out of jail, like what could have happened in that mid-fight. Yeah, their ex Aegis is also expiring, so they didn't get as much value out of this as they would, had maybe hoped, but it's good enough. They can keep farming. VP, if they have a good read on this game, should know that they are gaining massively. They can just take a look at the levels that they have access to, and they should be figuring out, oh, okay, this is probably, we're probably doing good. Maybe a bit misleading with the minus of the XP town on Tusk, but still. Oh, S4's OG, one go. Gets the star now, the EZ pass to the up It whips! He doesn't find the target. Tornado will fly through. The rock will drop. This will keep the rest of OG out. But Durax into the work Cold command. Looking to fight harder. Rams at the cover of the BKB. They focus on the Monkey King. Removing the command from the field. The Nova. It should be able to connect. But not in time to save at all. Not in time to save. Fly. Yes, it will. Four man's done. The lasso is there. Will it be enough? No tell. The damage is a terror blade. He's getting enough of it out, actually. The support is there. He'll sunder up no one. But he's lost his metamorphosis. The damage. It doesn't. Oh, does it? It does exist. When Pasha skewers forward. The bash is there. From no one, however, catching S4 down as no one blinks and runs. Solo is left behind. No tail. He does have that metamorphosis and chasing after Solo. Needs a little bit more damage. One more hit will do it. And this will be a four for three trade off, technically in favor of OG. The moment that RP missed, you could tell OG were all in on this fight. That's the best thing they can hope for. In addition, VP were kind of thinking about destroying the Supernova, I think, and then they were like, okay, we can kill the Invoker instead. And maybe in this situation, it would have been better to just destroy the Egg to make sure this AoE stun doesn't come out. It's kind of those damn it if you do damn it if you don't moments, where if you get on the if you get the Egg, you know Invoker has a lot of spells left and can turn around and do a lot on you, but at the same time, Fly did so much that fight by getting out of the Supernova, so... He, he bought time for the Terror Blade. Absolutely. And it, Big it, it fight did, for OG. It actually meant so much in the experience, you wouldn't have thought it was that close, but... I'm gonna see it here. Complete whiff on RP. Almost got both, but ended up getting none. And they even knew exactly where Jirax was. Jump in, gets the perfect command off, and Anna goes in pretty deep on this. Have a look at this. Ramsey's perfect choice. You need to kill the Monkey King first. Now he's, he was... I think he hit the Egg once, and then was like, oh, there's an Invoker, and now one health on the Egg. Just got it off. If that supernova breaks, the game's probably actually over. Mm -hmm. Like, they would have cleaned out this fight 5 0. Yep. Because Fly. Brought, while missing an RP. Fly actually brought so much regeneration back to the field. Like, it wasn't even just the fact that No Tone was able to get the Sunder off. He did a lot of damage, plus having the regen, plus the first strike. 
a lot of things to control. And it actually gave him a 3k gold swing in favor of OG and a roughly 6k experience swing. And a great fight for No Tail, who got a lot of money out of that. He, he's now level 22. Got a full Scotty. Full Scotty has the Crystalis looking in towards a Bloodthorn. They may have just fed the beast that is OG. It's going to take more than this, though. Re definitely. Remember that this was a completely ripped RP. Even a true hero RP from Pasha right now is a very big deal. Now, big pickup here for Fly. He's going to get the Lincoln Sphere to try to counter out, I would imagine, mainly the Abyssal of the Ursa. I'm wondering if he actually gives that over to, to Anna, because Anna's been more of that front line of saying, VP, please kill me, so then Notel gets more space to work as the Terror Blade. It's, it's definitely important that Anna stays alive. You, you yep. can't just sacrifice him at the start of the fight and expect to win it. The five fans smoking up. Ramses is the man revealing himself in mid. The scan is oh, out no the inside. They find no one. But the jump up from Kirax, he's on the hill. The Sun Strike should be able to connect, but no one connects by the BKB. The RP could only connect with Dover on Anna, who got pushed into the trees into relative safety. Dover is down. The stun is actually holding no one in position. This Dover it should be able to connect. It actually will do so. The Slide can't run away from this. But as pro, they've lost three. A terrible fight for them. After the back of that bottom engagement, they're looking for Solo. He's still on the run, S4 is behind him. He has the gem of true sight. Now the vision, the Sunstrike. Solo stops to heal. Actually saved it from the Sunstrike, but over into the tree line. S4, no Firefly available. So Solo needs some heavy jukes. Probably not going to be possible when he's sticky nade pumped up. Movement is not the greatest friend when you're all gunked up. And another lackluster RP. He got the Invoker, but the Invoker only. And the Invoker, an instant force staff. And VP couldn't stay on the target, so... He just bought back with uh, with no RP, so will the Ursa and no tell. Okay, they OG, they're happy with this. I don't think so. I think they're going to keep going. They're 5 on 3. There's no RP. And there's no Rock. Oh, it's worth thinking about it. And got Lasso in two seconds' time, so they have the initiation. And with Dark Pack being used by Slark Tornado, it catches him. S4 doesn't want to go that deep, however. You need to make sure they have this in power running constantly. They're picking Roshan, but he's caught up. OGO moving back towards Roshan, but he's still got almost another minute, or just under a minute, before he'll, he'll respawn. OG took the full map control here, though. They they have clearly better vision than VP because they kind of just team wiped them and forced them back into base. Look at the swing at the graph. Like, we were always talking, like, the goal was a good one, but the experience graph was the critical thing we're pointing out. That has come a long way north for OG. They have done a really good job at not positioning some, themselves for a bad for a good RP since that really big beat down next to the Roche Pit last time. Ramsey's finally has the counter to the Terror Blade, or at least part of it. He's picked up the Monkey King bar, so he doesn't have to worry so much about that butterfly no on my back. This is an all-in. He didn't use his. He gets caught now. Dangerous. And no one from VP has flyback. Everyone is, is out of money. Nice tornado. The MP, this is a little bit more delayed with a cold wall, no one, down to one third of his mana. He doesn't have buyback. Oh, wait for an S4, you can see him. He doesn't find his opening, the Sun Strike connects with Ram, He's, no one goes in! He sees an opportunity on Anna, but Anna gets pushed away. Four star, ever ready from S4. And they're coming over for Roshan now, the big man is up. They waited out the time. And there is nothing Virtus Pro can do about this. They're still defending their home. They'll get there too late. They won't even try. They know that they have way too bad map control right now. And they can fight into an Aegis. It will, however, also be a cheese. But on these high grounds, it's a lot easier to find an RP. And they even are able to engage without using RP. The Blink's Cure is also a threat. But OG, knowing OG, they're probably going to send some terribly delusions to hit these buildings and to set up for Batrider to get a catch. And that's going to make it, make it very difficult for VP to get into the fight. The fact that Monkey King did actually complete up his Abyssal Blade, he's picked up a Ghost Scepter as well, so surviving inside of his group on command while dishing out all these mass, mass bashes. The team fight has become a hell of a lot better for OG now, but you still do not count out Virtus Pro. They are a long way ahead, yes, maybe for the first time in maybe 30 minutes, OG is possibly going to have the advantage in net worth as well as gold, 
but Virtus Pro have RP and power targets up that will just cleave through OG if they get caught. So it's OG that have to have the perfect positioning of Virtus Pro, they just have to wait for OG to come to them. OG will be out farming them now though, this full map control. You mentioned the Monkey King Basher. He kind of have, has to be the target for BP in their next fight. You can't let this Wukong's command run into the, all of their melee cores. So, it is tricky. And he can keep farming as well. As you said, BP can wait for OG to come to them. What if they don't want? They can get okay. six slotted. It's difficult for BP right now to get map control back. They can use this Aegis to farm OG if they want. If you don't feel comfortable going in high ground, it is a play for them. Hopping out OG, even though they're doing the farming, like you see that he's like it's a low cooldown the tornado that was his level 25 upgrade just keeps throwing it out looking for EMP burst or some strike just let him know they're there and that EMP burst on a good job Lil's actually completely out of mana with the lasso picked up by S4 they'll easily kill off the Tusker in fact they know it so well that Anna is already looking for another kill he won't find it however but no tell is ready to push that's no Tusker for 65 more seconds the illusion on the kill some damage here. Fatal bombs will make the bomb. But still, this multi-lane push now coming from OG. They have the Force Spirits bottom. And these Hunts, oh. Abyssal Blade, they're trying to clean up Anna again. S4 with the Flame Break. Tornado will fly up. A quick Yule Scepter. They need to get him out of here. The Agency Mortal is still up for the RP. Connects beautifully from Pasha. Pull him back in. No one. It's time to nom 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 on OG. Will the damage be enough? Not with Nurtel. Summons the life back in again. Agency Mortal will trigger. Pasha, he's ticking out at the moment. He will die. Oh, Another nice control. Run. It's just too much control. No one. Spun up into the air once more. Come down into the sun strike and that will put him on the noggin solo he's dragged out everyone's gone gg og take game one in this grand final of kiev oh what a wukong's command to end it on just to prove the point oh man that's so it's so it's like soul crushing to just watch you've had these moments yourself in your pub games i'm sure you're playing against this monkey king as a melee core, you're in the fight, you're like, yeah, I got this big target. You just keep getting bashed. <laughs> they actually couldn't move in that fight, more or less. Two of their heroes were completely gone. And hats off to OG for being able to pull this game back. That looks really, really bad for them. They keep playing to the one advantage that they have, which is if they split.